Many years after the rapture hits the world, demonic human-eating creatures known as the burned ones haunt the woods. At the same time some survivors form a cult that consider speech a sin and remove their vocal cords to never speak again. Azriel and Keenan manage to escape that cult and are now surviving alone in the forest. One day Azriel hears a noise among the trees and gets nervous, so she quickly puts out the fire Keenan started. She's still on the verge of a panic attack, so Keenan comforts her with affection. In return, Azriel gives him a bracelet she made with branches and plants. At that moment they hear the noise again and realize it's whistling, which means the cult members are coming after them. The couple starts to run and Keenan decides they should split, so they run in opposite directions. Unfortunately Azriel is soon found by a cult member that begins chasing her, but when she tries to run back, another member captures her and hits her in the stomach to weaken her. Then the men drag her through the woods and Azriel notices Keenan has been caught as well. When they reach the road, Keenan tries to escape, but the cult members threaten him with a machete. Then he and Azriel are put in the trunks of different cars and taken away. Eventually the road splits and Azriel is horrified to see each car takes a different lane. She pounds on the trunk to try to get it open but it doesn't work. Moments later, the car stops and the cultists take Azriel to a specific spot in the woods. There are more cult members waiting including Josephine, one of the leaders. Azriel is tied to a chair and Josephine makes a cut on her leg to make her bleed, intending to use her as a sacrifice. The wind immediately starts blowing rather ominously, shaking the bottles hanging on the trees. Josephine and the cultists move away and start panting loudly as the silent equivalent of a chant. Soon a burned one appears among the trees and roars before making its way toward the chair. Azriel freaks out and keeps on pulling until she manages to break one of the armrests. A cultist immediately comes back to keep her from escaping and Azriel struggles against his hold until she accidentally stabs him in the neck with a broken wood. Then the man tries to walk away, only for the burned one to jump on him and start eating him. Azriel watches in shock while using her free hand to undo the other straps until she's finally free and can run away. Josephine and the other cultists had been looking the other way as part of the ritual and they don't notice Azriel is gone until it's too late. At the same time the burned one takes the dead man's body on its way out. Sometime later Azriel stops by the river to wash her wound, she also gathers some herbs that she wraps around it. While she's working, a burned one slowly approaches her from behind. Luckily she hears it before it gets too close and runs to hide inside an abandoned building. Azriel chooses the darkest spot she can find and stays still while the burned one peeks inside looking for her. Since it can't see her, it ends up leaving. Afterward Azriel finds the road and starts following the tire marks until she finds the cult's camp. She carefully sneaks around and finds a hidden spot on the fence that she can open up to get inside. Azriel continues to move silently, keeping an eye on the guard to avoid being seen. After hiding behind a car, she discovers Keenan's bracelet abandoned near some chains and assumes the worst. At that moment Josephine and her men come back so Azriel sneaks around again to keep an eye on her. She hides behind a tent and watches Josephine check on a sick old lady. Then Josephine enters the chapel, where the cultists are watching the main leader Miriam. She's pregnant, but this doesn't stop her from going through the ritual in which she listens to the wind coming through a hole because it supposedly speaks God's will. After several minutes of listening to the wind, Miriam blows out the altar candles and everyone leaves. Josephine stays to let Miriam slap her for failing the ritual in the forest, but they're suddenly interrupted by a noise outside. When Miriam looks out the window, she sees nothing because Azriel manages to hide under the building just in time. Josephine comes out to investigate so Azriel has to keep moving around to avoid being seen. For a moment she thinks she's successful, but suddenly Josephine appears next to her and grabs her legs to stop her from escaping. Then Josephine starts choking Azriel, who pushes her off and kicks her in the face. A desperate Azriel runs around the camp, trying not to be seen. Josephine rings a bell to alert everyone about an intruder, and soon everyone is hitting their bottles and pans to pass the message. Azriel is seen by a few cultists who start chasing her, so she hurries to the fence and hurts her hands on the barbed wire to uncover the hole quickly and cross the fence. Her foot gets stuck and a man grabs it to try to pull her back in, but Azriel keeps on fighting until she manages to kick him off and gets her leg out. Another cult member opens fire, however the bullet hits a tree and Azriel gets to escape. She runs through the woods as fast as possible until it's dark and she's too tired to keep going. Since her wounds are still open, she's leaving bloodstains all over the rocks and trees, and soon a burned one starts following the smell. Azriel sees it licking her blood off a rock and immediately starts running again as the creature begins chasing her. To make matters worse, a second burned one appears and joins the chase as well. Fortunately the first burned one trips and falls, giving Azriel the chance to reach the road untouched. Suddenly a light appears in front of her and she falls as something huge approach her, it's a truck, which stops right before it could hit her. The driver comes out and after the initial shock of seeing her, he asks if she's a survivor as he helps her up. Azriel is confused and can't answer any of his questions, instead she gets in the truck and desperately pounds on it as a way to ask him to get going. The man gets back on the wheel and drives throughout the night. He gives Azriel a cloth for her wound and explains he lives at the end of the road, where he has plenty of food. 
Azriel doesn't understand his language and shows him the cross-shaped scar on her neck, trying to make him realize she can't speak. The guy still doesn't get it and keeps on trying to make conversation to no avail. When he gives up, he turns on the radio and Azriel is amazed by the music. They barely get to ride a few miles when suddenly the driver is hit in the head by a bullet. The cultist in the middle of the road fires a couple more times yet he misses every shot because the truck has lost control. Azriel tries to take over the wheel but the body is in the way and the truck ends up running over the guy before crashing against a wall. After a few minutes of being unconscious, Azriel wakes up in a dizzy state because her head is heavily bleeding. She takes a few steps out of the truck and falls to her knees in pain, only to notice the cultist is still alive. Azriel jumps on him and starts fighting him for the gun, hitting his head twice before they shoot the gun by accident and begin rolling into the forest. When they split, the man tries to shoot her again and discovers he's out of bullets, so he uses the gun to hit Azriel's legs instead. At that moment she finds the fallen magazine and hits the cultist on the head with it a couple of times before kicking him off. Then Azriel crawls toward the gun and loads it, only for the man to grab her from behind and try to choke her. In the struggle, she manages to position the gun and fire it, killing the man at last. Afterward Azriel wanders through the forest with the gun. Near a tree she's shocked to see a fire, so she approaches slowly only to discover it's keen and nailed to the tree. When she's about to reach him, she accidentally steps on a trap and a rope closes around her leg, leaving her hanging upside down from a branch. Then a cultist shows up and grabs the gun, hitting Keenan with it. At that moment the wind begins blowing quite strongly and the cultist gets distracted. Azriel tries to climb up the rope, but she ends up hurting her hands even more. When she looks down again, the cultist is gone. Suddenly the man is pushed against a tree by a burned one, who begins eating its dinner. As a second burned one appears to help its fellow beast kill the cultist, a desperate Azriel tries to climb up the rope again while ignoring the unbearable pain in her hands. She reaches the top of the tree just in time to watch a third burned one join the other two as they feed on the guy. Once the creatures are done with the cultist, one of them leaves with the body, but the second one jumps on Keenan to kill him too. Keenan's body is also dragged away after some bites while the third beast starts climbing up the tree. Azriel has to stop moving to remove the rope from her leg and this gives the burned one time to catch up to her, pushing her against the branch with impressive strength. When it's about to bite her, Azriel puts the rope around its neck and pushes it off the tree, also falling in the process. She survives the fall but the beast is hanging dead. Sometime later, Azriel returns to the cultist camp with the gun. Hiding behind a tree, she whistles to pretend she's one of the cultists. Soon Josephine brings a small group of followers into the forest to investigate, leaving the way open for Azriel to sneak into the camp using the same hole in the fence as last time. She carefully makes her way into the chapel and finds Miriam, who shows off her pregnant belly to appear weak. When Azriel hesitates to shoot, Miriam quickly disarms and hits her on the head with a pan. As Azriel falls, she scratches Miriam's belly. Afterward Josephine and her group drag Azriel to a grave in the forest. They spread her blood on her face while listening to the blowing wind before throwing her into the casket, which they quickly close and cover with dirt. Azriel begins freaking out and hitting the wood, but nobody helps her. When the burial is done a lantern suddenly is turned on at Azriel's feet, revealing a tunnel connected to the casket. Bringing the lantern with her, Azriel begins crawling through the tunnel, only to find a burned one at the back. She immediately turns around and moves as fast as possible to return to the casket while the creature follows her and soon is crawling on top of her. However, instead of eating her, it smells her hand and recognizes the smell of Miriam's blood, causing it to roar in approval and leave. Feeling safe, Azriel tries the tunnel again and this time she manages to escape. Moments later, Josephine runs out of the chapel when she hears a noise and she's horrified to discover that the tent with the old lady is on fire. A cultist raises the alarm while the others work together to try to put the fire off, However, it's too late, the old lady is dead and the flames are already spreading through the camp. This provides Azriel with the perfect cover to sneak around and shoot the cult members one by one. Josephine watches in horror and tries to move away, only for Azriel to shoot her in the stomach so she'll die slowly. As everyone panics and tries to run away, the fire reaches a gas canister and causes a small explosion. A man is devastated to discover his girlfriend has been shot down and picks up a gun to fight back, exchanging shots with Azriel as they both sneak around. While the fire destroys the camp little by little, the man wanders around in confusion because he can hear whistling coming from multiple corners. Thinking Azriel is messing with him, he shoots the first shadow he sees, only to discover he's killed a fellow member. The shock leaves him frozen and Azriel uses the chance for a surprise attack, decapitating the man with a machete. Then Azriel enters the chapel again and Miriam jumps on her from behind, disarming her with her own blade. Miriam starts chasing Azriel around the room, moving the benches out of the way to finally grab her. She pushes Azriel against the table and tries to decapitate her, but Azriel kicks her off. When Miriam attacks again, Azriel easily dodges and pushes Miriam against the wall to bite her neck. As Miriam tries to deal with the pain, her water finally breaks. Suddenly someone shoots the chapel's cross, it's Josephine, who moves very slowly because of her wound. She keeps on shooting her gun while approaching Azriel, 
but she ceases fire when she notices Miriam is giving birth on her bed. Azriel uses the distraction to tackle Josephine to the ground, breaking a bench in the process. Josephine breaks a piece of bench wood on Azriel, who does the same in return. Then Josephine takes out a small blade, only for Azriel to block her attack and smash her head on a bench before dropping her. Next Azriel gets Miriam's knife and strikes Josephine on her neck. At the same time the baby is heard crying, Josephine removes the knife from her neck and finally falls dead. Miriam leaves the bed looking terrified and she uses Azriel's machete to self-delete. Suddenly a strong wind gets into the chapel and puts out all the candles. A horde of burned ones crosses the forest and the camp before entering the chapel, where Azriel has picked up the baby. It turns out the child is shaped like a goat that resembles the Antichrist. The burned ones roar to receive their new leader and Azriel smiles when she realizes the power she holds in her arms.